So I'm back with another video and today I'm gonna talk about James Craig Culler, uh, a love triangle that led to family murder. But before we get on with the case, please, please, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Without any further ado, let's get on with the video. James Craig Culler was born on January 15, 1963 in Kansas, USA. Wayne and Patricia was his parents and were really happy when James was born. James was a new start for them as they were going through a lot of hardships. James was the first son of Wayne and Patricia. They also had a second son named Chris. James Craig Keller was very popular in school, but it wasn't because of his activities. He was actually very good at studies and his middle name Craig was popular since school. As soon as he finished school, he got a seat at Kansas State University as he was academically very good, where he studied engineering and he was good at studies in college as well. Actually, he was in top seven scholars in college that year. He was a very positive and bright person by nature, which helped him make a lot of friends. When students were leaving their course, James, on the other hand, was excelling in every department, so it was hard not to notice him. When James was in last year, then he met first-year guitar player Karen Keller. Karen was also smart, bright, and extroverted. So when they met, there was an instant connection between them. On top of this, James and Karen were power couple of their college. If you have ever seen Riverdale, just imagine their life was exactly like Riverdale. Everybody loved them, respected them, and also, in a good way, they were also jealous of their relationship as well. James was financially secure after college as well. He was chosen for a Kansas engineering firm where he was paid well. And he was working on multiple high-profile jobs as well as his research too. Because of multiple jobs, a lot of people knew James in his area. And they were really close to James and used to rely on him in need. He had money, so he married Karen on 28 December of 1985 after graduating from college. Everything in his life was going great. James was rich, he was popular, and everybody loved him. And people were jealous of the relationship as they were college sweethearts. But grass is always greener on the other side. James was power hungry as he was an ambitious man. He wanted everything his way. Everything should be on perfect time, in perfect order, in line with his vision. So Karen used to do everything in perfect order for James after marriage. For example, how to wash the clothes, dishes, and what to cook. Everything was according to James. At this time, Karen was happy with her life and with her marriage. And they were about to have a baby named Emily Killer. And after Emily was born, James got a job offer. In 1999, James got a job offer from Texas about utility director. And with a big job comes a big paycheck as well. So James decided that we have a daughter and I also have to buy a house. So why not move to Texas? But he took this decision alone by himself. Karen was happy for James. But she felt bad that James took such a big decision alone. Regardless of that, Keller family moved to Texas. And just after working for six months in Texas, James bought a really big mansion. And the coming year, James and Karen had two more kids, Lauren and Sean Keller. Emily was as popular as her parents, and most of it because she was pretty. She was also very interested in music, just like her mom. In fact, she used to play guitar and drums in her school band as well. If we talk about Lauren, she was not as much popular as her sister, but still she had a lot of friends. 
She was very fun and living in her own world kind of girl. And Lauren also used to sing. She was also with her sister in the same school band. And Sean was still young at this time, but he was opposite to his sisters. He was shy and a quiet kid. But because of Lauren and Emily, it seemed like that the past was repeating itself. These two were popular in school and extroverts. And every neighborhood kid wanted to be their friend, just like Karen and James in college. In this time, Karen was also hanging out with her neighbors. And she became a part of her neighbor community plan. Everyone thought that Karen Keller must be very happy from her life, from her marriage, from her husband, and with her kids. But the truth was that nothing of this was true. James Craig Keller was a sexual fiend. According to Karen's friends, she was a very devoted wife. She used to take care of her kids and helped Emily and Lauren with their band practices. She was also nourishing Sean as he was still a kid. She always waited for James to come back home. And watching all these things, their friends thought that they were a happy couple. But Karen was not happy in her own home. Karen started complaining to her sister a little while after Sean was born. And all of these complaints were related to James only. According to James' nature, he used to have specific demands in bed from Karen. He had to make sexual relation with Karen every single night at 8. And after this, every night around 9, Karen had to sleep without any fail. Healthy sex can keep a couple's love alive for many years. But for Karen, sex was just a duty. But she had to do all this to keep James happy and keep her kids away from any kind of trauma. It didn't matter what Karen wanted. In this house, James was the commander. And this control was not only limited to bed. James used to give Karen allowance for household expenses. And she could never exceed those allowance. No matter what she did, she had to stick to that budget. If their kid ever wanted anything, he used to say, It's not my problem. This is not my headache. I've given you money. Manage in that only. Which, if you think about it, it's so weird. He came to Texas because he got a big job and more money. And we also know that he worked inside sometimes. So it wasn't like he was lacking money. Normally, a father earns money for his wife and his kids. If they would have been poor, then it was understandable, but they were actually rich, and their kids were fine too. Mostly, they used to ask money for musical-related things, but James didn't care about his wife's and kids' happiness. The situation got so bad that Karen needed a distraction in her life, and from James. So she started baking in her own house. First, she had not thought about selling the cakes. But when she took her cake to her neighbor community meeting, so many people started giving her cake order, thinking that it's under her time. And it doesn't take a lot of money. So Karen started baking her cakes and selling them. From the earnings, she took care of her kids' needs and took a membership in the nearby gym. So Karen started going to the gym and she was already so smart. So while working out, she started learning a lot from her trainer. And after some time, she became a permanent trainer in that gym. James did not said anything to Karen about the gym. He was fine with it as long as she got back home before James reached the house. James did not care about her free time, which worked out in Karen's case. Karen worked in a gym named Power House. And this was a very big gym where multiple exercises and people of multiple level used to work out. And there was a different instructor for every level. And one of the instructors was Sunny. Sunny and Karen met in the gym 
After completing their training, they both used to work out together, and from here their friendship began. After a while, both of them became very close friends, and they were actually inseparable. They also had physical relation, and Karen was clear that this relationship is more than just friendship. So out of fear, she told about this to James. Obviously, she was very scared as James kept eyes on everything she did. And without his approval, Karen never did anything and this was about an affair when she was already married. But to her surprise, James had no problem from this relationship. James was encouraging this relationship of Karen. Karen did not believe this at first, but when James did not stop her for a few weeks, so she got very happy. Sunny and Karen were very happy together, and they also got intimate sometimes. But Karen still had a lingering feeling that something is wrong. Sunny and Karen were now a proper couple. They spent most of their time together, and they used to meet outside the gym. And all of this was monitored by James. So one day James said that you owe me a favor. I gave you this house, this life, and also let you have a relationship with someone else. James told Karen that you'll have to do something for me. When Karen asked what, then she could not believe it. James asked her for a threesome with Sunny. In fact, he told her to convince Sunny for a threesome. But when both of them said no to James' offer, James got very angry. James was now monitoring every move of Sunny and Karen, monitoring their gym timing when they meet and everything. After his suggestion, James tried many times to break Sunny and Karen apart. But Karen was back to her free spirit nature. And she was at home with James just because of the kids. So James came up with a plan to break Sunny and Karen apart. Columbia, Missouri, which is 10 hours away from Texas, James took a low-paid income job there just so that he could separate them. He knew that Karen loved the kids too much and she would never leave her kids for an affair. And sadly, this plan worked. Karen chose her kids at the end. But she loved Sunny, and the relationship was still going on after moving to misery. When James was at work, then Sunny and Karen talked on the phone for hours, and they sent texts to each other at night through email. James saw this thing, he got very angry and assaulted Karen, and in anger, he broke her phone. Sunny found out about this. So on 26th January, Sunny wrote an email to James. You can't force, threaten, or humiliate Karen like you did yesterday and expect her to love you for it. She's only staying with you because she believes that right now it's best for the kids. She doesn't love you, Craig. Not like you think she does. That's the problem with your marriage. Ask her and you'll see I'm right by the look in her eyes. After reading this mail, James and Karen's relationship took bad turns, started fighting a lot and sometimes never talked for ages. It became very toxic, but things were about to get worse for both of them. Some of Karen's friends from Texas had planned a New Year Eve's party and they obviously invited James and Karen. But because this party was in Texas, Sunny was also there. As soon as Karen saw Sunny, she held her hand and they went away from the party, because of which James felt uncomfortable. When James went out to search for them, then he saw that Karen and Sunny were kissing on a couch, and now their secret were out to everyone, because no one knew about the Sunny and Karen's relationship. Three of them got into a loud fight in between the ongoing party, and this fight was Karen's breaking point. Karen told Sunny that she can't live like this anymore, and she wants a divorce, so after New Year Eve's party, Karen filed for divorce against James. And James got very scared after looking at the papers. This was the first time that something was happening against his plans and his choices. And he couldn't even control the situation. James was jealous of Sunny, so 
So he called Karen's family members and portrayed her as a villain. He requested Karen's family to talk to their daughter as she has lost her mind. But Karen just wanted a divorce. And on next year in March, he proceeded his filing. James thought that after divorce, Karen would take all the money and house. But Karen didn't want it any of this. She just wanted her kid's custody. But after this, something weird started to happen to James. And from here on, the real story of James starts. So listen carefully. Before divorce, James was a composed, manipulating human being. In any situation, he never lost his composure. But when Karen sent her divorce paper to James, his nature started to change. He started talking weirdly and also assaulted Karen at home, because of which he was arrested for house assault. James said in police station that he was just hugging his wife. But from Karen's point of view, he wanted to break her bones. She also showed her bruises on her biceps and forearms. So police agreed to Karen. Emily, Lauren, and Sean were scared in their own house now. So Karen thought of moving back to Texas with the kids. And obviously she went to Sunny first in Texas. After receiving this information, James' behavior got even worse. He started talking weirdly. He was not doing his job properly. He started shouting at people on the road, especially on girls. And after looking at his condition, James' parents called him back to their farmhouse, which was in Meriden. And now James was living with his parents. Whenever there was a holiday or a festival, then the Keller family went through a weird tension, especially for kids, that whether to spend the holidays with dad or mom. In this situation, the kids has to choose that with whom they want to spend their time with. Emily and Lauren had seen James hitting Karen, so both of them chose their mom. But Sean spent most of his holidays with his dad. James was trying to be a good dad in front of his son. But as the year was ending, James' condition was getting worse. Not feeling safe for his kid, Karen did not send Sean to James' house for vacation. She took all the kids to her grandma, Dorothy White's. But James found out about this too. And he was angry, thinking that Karen is stealing his kids from him. And this is where James turned into a complete psycho. Twenty-eight November 2009, Dorothy called police station and said that a thief has entered their house and he has a shotgun. It's clear from this audio chat that during the call, she wasn't aware of the person in the house. Before the call got hung up, this man shot Dorothy twice. When police arrived, they saw that Dorothy had lost a lot of blood and was sitting at the wall. Police started to search the house and they found Karen dead in the dining room. She had a big hole in her back and there were blood spots near the dining. Police found Emily near the sofa outside the dining. Dead. Emily had a pump shot mark through her chest. Emily's body also had gun magazines next to her. I really can't show you the pictures but Emily also had bruises and some marks in her hand. When police was checking Emily's body, then they heard a painful scream from upstairs. They quickly ran towards the room and they saw Lauren sitting there, who also had bum shot marks on her back and her mouth was bleeding. She was very injured, but she still was able to talk. The next clip is a conversation between Lauren and the beauty. Just remember that at this time, Lauren's back was severely injured. But Lauren answered every question, even being in too much pain. The beauty asked her who did this. Do you know? Lauren said, it's Craig, my dad. Police tried to take Lauren and Dorothy to hospital. But poor Lauren, she died as soon as she reached hospital. Dorothy also took James' name when she reached hospital. Only Sean was left now, and he was the youngest. He saw all of this, how his dad was killing his family member one by one. But he couldn't do anything. He got freeze. And as James came in front of him, he scared him off with the gun and told him to run away. 
After that, he went to his neighbor's house and asked them to call police. He was so scared that when police came to his grandma's house, then also he was not able to force himself to look towards his grandma's house. In such a young age, Sean knew that his dad had killed his whole family. The thing for me and that I still have no answer for is, is how uh, a father can do that to his children. Uh, he, he literally had to chase one of his daughters through the house. Sheriff's Deputy Nathan Perling was first to arrive at one of the most horrific crimes Osage County has ever seen. This father of three says his shift on Saturday, November 28, 2009, started out just like any other. I was actually doing paperwork here in the office uh, when the call came in of a suspicious vehicle. That was around 6.15 p.m. About a minute later, while Perling was en route to the scene, another call came over the radio. This time, a report from Life Alert about a shooting at the same address. I got to the, got to the address. That's when I could see Dorothy in the front, the front porch window. Perling cautiously made his way inside to find Dorothy White covered in blood and clinging to life. He then spotted Karen Kaler on the floor in the dining room and went over to check her for a pulse. Uh, at the same time, uh, I could hear somebody uh, crying for help. That plea was from 16-year-old Lauren Kaler, who had been shot in an upstairs bedroom. Perling would stay by Lauren's side until paramedics arrived. In her last words, the mortally wounded teen told Perling that it was her father that opened fire. Police published James's photos everywhere the next day, and they were about to go out on a patrol to search for him, but they received a call. A lady saw James a little outside on the jungle leaving his gun and truck. So police reached there as soon as possible, and they arrested James when he was trying to bury his guns. When police was asking James about the murder, so he was not giving a straight answer, and he tried to blame Sonny for everything. James said that Sonny was trying to steal money from his bank account. More accurately, she was trying to get money off of Karen and this relationship should have never moved ahead of sex, which made James very angry when police asked him that why did you kill Emily and Lauren, and why did you let Sean go? James said both of them took their mom's side, and Sean is still a kid, I can't show him the right way. In court, James tried to end the case by excuse of mental illness. His lawyers said during the murder days, James was not well mentally because of which he was having hallucinations. And James's own parents hated him for killing Karen and their granddaughters, but they also accepted that after divorce, his mental health was not okay. It seemed like James would win in court, but the last man who testified in court against James was none other than Sean. He said that I saw him entering the house after which a loud noise came followed by my mom falling on the ground. And after hearing this, Code's decision was fixed. They gave James a death sentence in October of 2011. Motion today as he heard his fate. The execution sentence comes as retribution for the shooting deaths of four family members. Court at this time sentences the defendant uh, for the crime of capital murder to death. James Craig Kaler opted not to speak on his own behalf and even asked if he could leave the room to avoid hearing the victim impact statements. Chief Judge Philip Fromm ordered him to stay. I love to Just because of someone's controlling nature and jealousy, four people died. And the man did not have any regrets till the last moment, which makes you really question that was he really mentally ill or if this was the first time that he couldn't control an outcome which hurt his ego but i guess we'll never know well this case ends here thank you all for watching and please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and i hope to see you in my next video bye